Hey guys, John here from Bring the SEO. Today's short presentation I've titled this one, Minding the Gaps During Client Onboarding. I know that sounds a bit cryptic, but stick with me. It'll all make sense in just a moment. So let's start with the definition of client onboarding. Client onboarding is the nurturing phase that gets new clients acquainted and comfortable with your service offering. Now, if you'll see, I've purposely bolded the word nurturing here, and I've done so for a specific reason. So why is nurturing important during the onboarding phase? Well, nurturing matters during this phase in particular because expectations are usually at their highest. That is, of course, new clients when they sign up and come on board, usually excited, They've perhaps been through a sales process. Perhaps you've pitched a presentation or sent a proposal or done something of that nature. And they've seen, they've been through the material and they've seen what it is that you're proposing. They're rather excited. So their emotions are typically fairly heightened at this point and they're eager to get started. So expectations are usually at their highest at the beginning of the engagement especially if they've just made payment following uh, as part of the follow-on process of a sales presentation. New clients, the next point, new clients are usually anxious and excited to get started, especially, as I said, if they've just been through a sales uh, process and they've seen what it is that you've uh, proposed. They've been through your recommendations, you've you know, you've pitched your services, you said, okay, this is where you are, this is what we can do, this is perhaps what we've done for other Companies the same as yours, and this is where um, our forecasted projections are in terms of what um, what we can do for you. Now, of course, if they've just been through that process, um, they're going to be they're going to be excited to get started. I say anxious because, of course, it's a new relationship, and um, you haven't yet established that trust, which is my next point. So it's at this point where new clients are most sensitive simply because you haven't yet established trust. And that is, of course, especially if they've just paid money, they've just paid you for the first uh, month's worth of SEO services, they put, them, they put the money down. They're going to have some level of cautious uh, optimism around hoping that they've made the right decision, which is my next point, um, because they don't yet have... They haven't yet established that relationship. There's no no like and trust there. And the last point, of course, is they're also cautiously optimistic and very hopeful that they've made the right decision. Again, especially if they've just made payment, they want to know, they want to feel confidence in the sake that they've done their due diligence, they've made the right decision. They certainly don't want to feel as though they've got it wrong. Nobody wants to feel that way, of course. So they wanna know that they've made the right decision in choosing to work with you and your agency. Let's now take a look at uh, a typical onboarding process. This is fairly typical for most SEO agencies. You'll see here that I've included the initial inquiry. That isn't necessarily part of the onboarding process. Um, I've chosen to uh, include it because this is where a lot of the problems can uh, happen certainly at the very beginning. So for the sake of this video and for the point that I'm trying to make, I've decided to include it. Now, if we think about our onboarding process, it's, you know, again, for most agencies, this is going to be fairly typical. You're going to have the initial inquiry as that initial inquiry comes in, followed on, of course, by the sales process for those uh, prospects who qualify and decide to uh, to work with you, you'll then, of course, go about collecting payment. Once payment, once payment is collected, you then go about um, the campaign setup. And then, of course, once campaign setup is completed, campaign commencement. And again, this is fairly typical. These main points are fairly typical for most SEO agencies. There might be some slight variations in here, but this is fairly common overall. Now, it would be a fair assumption to say that for most of us working in the SEO space, we put all of our emphasis, energy, time, resources, and everything else to build out processes in, at each of these steps. We want to make sure that we have processes in place to 
accommodate new inquiries as they come in. We want to know that we follow this certain procedure or protocol in terms of any uh, inquiries that come through. The same, of course, should apply to your sales process, whether you have a sales team or you, you have dedicated staff to handle that for you. You want to have, um, of course, processes and systems in place to handle your sales process. And of course, the way in which you collect payment um, would also apply. Then the steps you take in terms of setting up, um, you know, uh, the campaign or campaign enablement. And then, of course, um, the commencement of the actual campaign where you kick things off. So, again, we, we would tend to focus, for most SEO agencies, we would tend to focus all of their efforts on building out processes and systems in each of these, at each of these stages. However, it's within these gaps where problems can occur, hence my title. Now, what do I mean by this? Let's take a look at a few examples. So following on from the initial inquiry, this is where the client sends an inquiry but doesn't hear back from anyone and they're not sure if they will. And this, of course, can leave the client wondering, did they get my email? Are they going to get back to me? Or did I miss something? Is, or is there, is there something else I'm supposed to do? And this, of course, can be um, fairly common, especially if you don't respond in a timely manner. In a timely manner, you don't have, um, uh, let's say, an auto reply for your email outside of office hours or you don't have voicemail set up it can be quite disconcerting when you're sending uh, when a client sends an inquiry through and they don't get uh, some sort of acknowledgement at the very least uh, let alone a reply that can be a little bit concerning and typically when that happens you know that doubt and uncertainty around as to whether or not they're going to get a reply at all can often lead prospects perhaps going somewhere else. The next point is after sales, uh, after the sales or payment process, and this one is especially after making payment. This is where the client makes payment, then doesn't hear from anyone. You know, this might sound crazy, but I've, I've seen this time and time again. This is where the client will be thinking, well, did they get my payment? Where's my invoice? Or when will I hear from someone? Will they contact me or do I have to follow up? Or is there something else I'm supposed to do? Again, there's that level of uncertainty and confusion around what's happening next. And I find it really interesting that for most SEO agencies, they built out these really slick sales processes where the client, <laughs> there really are no gaps at all. And the client knows exactly what they need to do next. And that, of course, is to make payment. But often on the other side of making payment, things go quiet. And this is where... Um, the breakdown happens during that gap between making payment and then campaign commencement. The next, of course, is camp uh, campaign kickoff and commencement. And this is um, what I was just touching on. And this is where the client feels a sense of isolation and uncertainty simply because they haven't heard from anyone. This is where they'll be thinking, when, when will I, we hear from someone? When, when are we going to receive our reports? Who do I contact if we have a question or am I supposed to do anything? All of these issues that I've just touched on all share one thing in common, and that is the client doesn't know what's next. And this in itself is a huge problem. When the client doesn't know what's next or what's happening next or if they should be doing something or if they're going to hear from someone else or if they're just caught in limbo, this causes the client to feel, one, a total lack of confidence, two, uncertainty, doubt, and potential mistrust or skepticism. And lastly, three, buyer's remorse, especially after having made payment. They just made payment, they've been through some big fancy sales process, they've just made payment, and then all of a sudden they feel like they've been abandoned. That's not a good thing. And this is essentially my next point. Anytime a client doesn't know what's next, they feel abandoned, and that is not, that's certainly not ideal. So what's the solution? The solution is, of course, we need to ensure continuity between each stage. We want to make sure that there's no gaps in between each stage and the prospect or client moves through each of these stages in a smooth, timely, efficient manner. So a few golden rules of continuity. This is how we can ensure that we do that. 
Firstly, always recap on what's been covered and what's going to happen next. This is absolutely key. The client should um, not only know what's going to happen next, but it's always worthwhile recapping what you've just covered. So recap what you've just covered and then tell them, explain to them clearly what's going to happen next. Next point is always ask the client if they have any questions and make sure they understand everything before moving on. Don't make the assumption that the client knows what to do next or what's going to happen next. Always ask the client, do you have any questions? Is there anything that I've missed? Uh, you know, is there anything that we can go over before we move on? Make sure that they understand exactly what's been covered uh, and they understand what's going to happen next. Next point is always ensure both parties are clear on their responsibilities. Again, don't make the assumption that the client knows that they need to send you that information or the client knows that you're, all, that you're still waiting on logins. Don't make assumptions. Make sure that you, um, you clarify who's responsible for what, especially at the very beginning. Okay, Karen, our team is going to be responsible for doing these things. These are the things that we need from you in order to move forward. Next, prevent lengthy delays between stages. You can see I've got here, silence can be a killer. And I know this to be true because anytime things go quiet and a client starts thinking, what's happening next? That's, that's not a good thing. And anytime things go quiet like this, that's again when clients start to feel that level of doubt and uncertainty. So you need to make sure that you respond and follow up the next step in a timely manner. You don't want things going quiet for two or three weeks in between stages. Next point, avoid giving clients too much to do or overwhelming them with information. I know a lot of SEO consultants are guilty of this and they'll get to a certain point in that onboarding process and they'll say, we need, to, we need you to fill out these forms and they'll send over a dozen forms or we need you to do this and that and we'll give them this big long list of things to do and all, of, all that does is cause bottlenecks and, um, and lengthy delays. So you want to try and remove as much of that as possible so that you're able to again move through each of those stages in a timely manner. And my last point here, clarify communication channels. Should they need assistance? Always do this. Always remind them and say, hey, if you need help, you can call this number in the office or you can get in touch uh, through this email or you can go here to raise a support request. But make sure they're aware of that. If they don't know how to get in touch with someone or they've got an email that's bouncing or a phone number that's not being answered or they are calling a number and they're getting handed around in between several different accounts managers, that again is not going to be ideal. So to summarize, always ensure the client knows what's next. If you, if you follow this simple rule and remove any sort of doubt or uncertainty or confusion around what's next for the client, then your onboarding process will be far more efficient, certainly far more enjoyable, and you'll be able to strengthen those relationships and kick things off in the right direction for all of your campaigns moving forward. Hey, if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to learn more, head over to bringtheseo.com. We provide business development training for SEO consultants wanting to improve their processes, increase profits, and scale to $100,000 a month or more without all the stress and overwhelm.